Let's get straight to it. This is the game preview between the mighty Minnesota Vikings and the Detroit Lions. Let's tame the Lions on Christmas Eve because I ain't scared of the Lions. The Lions will always be the Lions. You know what the Lions always do? The Lions always lose. When it counts the most, I know for a fact because history of the Lions is a lot of losing in their history, y'all. And I don't mean to be funny, but I'm talking my talk and I'm keeping it real. So why should I feel threatened that if they win a Northern Division, they're going to possibly go on a, on a Super Bowl run? I don't believe in that. They're so excited and hype about winning in the division, and they might potentially lose a division still. If we win out and they lose out, we can win a division. But I don't care about divisions because my aspirations as a Minnesota Viking fan, our aspirations as Viking family is to get a dang on Super Bowl. Can I talk my talk? Talk. That talk. This is the keys to victory against the Lions. I'm going to start with turnovers. We got to take care of the freaking football, man. We haven't had luck taking care of the football. The only game we had luck was in was against the Las Vegas Raiders. I mean, it was against them. And that was it. Every other team we went against were giving up turnovers left and right. Nick Mullins is named the starting quarterback. Kevin O'Connell, I'm just going to go with the flow with that. I think Jaron Hall should have been the starting quarterback, but that's a story for another day. Kevin O'Connell, your play calling better be better because the Lions ain't that good. Their defense ain't that good, right? If we play turnover-free football, this is, about, this is their de defense. Their overall ranked defense, overall total defense is 15th. Passing defense is 18th. Rushing defense, I am really surprised, and I mean that in no disrespect, is <laughs> ranked eighth. That's, it's going to be tough to run the ball on these guys, man. They got a couple of defensive tackles, McNeil, Isaiah Bugs. They got Levi, Benito, Jones. They got Broderick, Martin. They got a couple of defensive tackles that could definitely stop that run. But when it comes to getting after the pass rusher, that's a whole nother story. They can't get off. Of, they can't get after the pass rusher like we can. Like the Neil Hunter, the best defensive end in the NFL right now. Only second to TJ Watts. He's a half sack short of getting that number one spot. But let's get back to what I was saying. They ain't gonna get at the pass rusher. We ain't worrying about that. Scoring defense, meaning the points that they allow every game, they're giving up 23 points, and they're ranked 23 out of 32 teams in the NFL. So we can definitely put up points on them. But the worst thing about this defense that I'm not scared of is Kevin O'Connell. You have to study the you have to study this defense a lot better than the defenses you've been studying previously because you can score on this defense. They're ranked 29th in red zone defense. Can I talk? Talk that. Talk. You already know the vibes, man. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the like button if you haven't already. But let me get back to what I was saying. So their defenses can be had. They're not the toughest. This is a team that can definitely lose badly to us if we can get it together, right? So we have to still run the ball, even though their rushing defense is eighth overall in the NFL. You still have to have that as a threat. Maybe run on the outside. Maybe not run in the middle at the defensive tackles. Maybe run on the outside. You know I mean, use that speed, Ty Chandler's speed. And going to the running back situation, I'm not sure if Ty will be the running back one. I don't know if it's going to be split carries. I got to see it to believe it. I want to see what Kevin O'Connell is going to do at, when it comes to the running back situation. I'm hoping Ty gets more carries than Alexander Madison. But regardless of all that, we have to run the ball because we need the most help for this quarterback, this backup quarterback. We need to block. So our offensive line's been hurt. I'm not sure if Brian O'Neill is going to be able to play like Brian O'Neill. Even if he plays, depending on the ankle sprain, it could be a second degree sprain. It could be a first degree sprain. It could be a third degree sprain. Even if he has it wrapped up, that thing can go anytime. I'm hoping the best that he plays and he can play like Brian O'Neill. Hopefully the offensive line can hold up against the Lions defensive line. 
They only have one good pass rusher that I would that's even worth mentioning, in my opinion, and that's Aiden Hutchinson with six and a half sacks. I don't really care about it. I don't really care about it. I really don't. I don't care about their defense. Their secondary ain't all that. They're not that good. So I'm not even going to sit here and be like, oh, they got all these different players. They got a couple of players. Um, What's the uh, linebacker name? Their leading linebacker, number 34. I believe his name is Alex and Zalone. He has 70 solo tackles. He's leading their team in tackles with three sacks. I'm not, but other than that, I'm not really worried about their defense, right? So... Our offensive line has to do their thing. They have to give them as much time as possible. Another, th another thing that we have to do, we have to utilize our wide receivers. We have to utilize our tight ends. And it has to flow a lot better than it has been. Because I look at it like this, right? Don't overdo it when it comes to when we get to the red zone. If it's third and eight and... I'm not saying don't be aggressive because I want us to be aggressive. But, man, we need all the points we can get, man. We've been struggling getting points. And that one turnover that we threw against the Bengals, it was literally in the red zone. And it was an interception right there. Man, three points would have helped us a lot right there, man. But I'm, but I'm not, like I say, I'm not saying don't be aggressive. You got to go all in. This is one of those games where... We have to literally win because we got teams that are tied with us. And we only got the, the, the tie against them, the tiebreakers, because we won more games in a division. That's, that's the only reason why. So we have to win this game. We have to win this game. Give the ball to Justin Jefferson. Give the ball to Jordan Addison. TJ Hawkinson can have a field day against this team. Like literally in the red zone. Everybody should have a field day against this team. We ain't worrying about them. Like I said, we ain't scared. We ain't scared. But let me go back to what I said because I don't want to mistake. I don't want to say something that y'all might think and I'm, that I'm scared because I'm not scared. I just want to make sure we take care of the football because I know we do have a backup quarterback. Be aggressive, but be smart about it. That's all I got to say, right? But there's really nothing else to talk about. What we really have to do, we know what we have to do. We play Viking football, we can beat anybody, and I'm going to stick to it. But all we got to do is get into the playoffs. That's all, that's all that matters right now. But let's get to the defensive side of the ball. Brian Flores, Brian Flores, Brian Flores. I know last game against the Bengals, the fourth quarter was a disaster. But I know you could do much better than that. And I know this defense could do so much better than that. There's only a couple of players, a few players that we have to contain. And it starts with the running game. They probably have the best running game in the whole NFL. It starts with Montgomery, number five, and Gibbs, number 26. Montgomery has 855 rushing yards. And he also has 10 touchdowns. And his average per carry is 4.8. We got to stop that, man. When it comes to Gibbs... He ain't no slouch either, y'all. He ain't no slouch. The man has 792 rushing yards. And he has seven touchdowns. And per average, per carry, he has 5.7. Which I ain't feeling that, man. This is going to be hard because our weakness is stopping the run. I ain't going to lie, man. I ain't feeling it, but I ain't never scared. Let's tame those lions. Let's tame those lions. We take the run game away from Jared Goff because I don't believe in Jared Goff. I think Jared Goff is overrated, man. I don't care about his stats, really, but I'm going to say some of his stats. I don't really care about him, but I'm going to just say some of his stats, what he did so far this season. We'll see what he does when it comes to the playoffs. You know what I mean? Because they will make the playoffs. I ain't going to hate on them that much. They are, they, they're going to make the playoffs. Jared Goff threw for 3,727 yards. He has 26 touchdowns and 10 interceptions on the year. Last game against the Chicago Bears, he did not have a good game. I know he threw for two interceptions. And the Bears defense has been playing good the last few weeks. So I give the Bears defense a little bit of something. But they lost to the stinking Bears, man. Badly. You know what I mean? I'm not scared of them. But let's see what Jared Goff can do without that run game. Without that play action, what can Jared Goff do? And the answer to that, to me, in my opinion, is nothing. He can't do nothing, man. I ain't scared of Jared Goff. I ain't scared. They're going to have to take it from us, man. Take, when I mean by take it from us, they, they can win a division. 
But when we play y'all in the playoffs, if there's a possibility that we play y'all for the third time in the playoffs, we're going to beat the brakes off of y'all, right? And all that division, crown, whatever y'all want to talk about doesn't mean anything. Because I was talking to some Lion fans the other day, and they was talking all this trash about, oh, we got a better running game. That's true. We had a better offensive line. We had a better quarterback. That's not saying too much. You got a better quarterback because our starting quarterback's been out for a while with an Achilles injury. I'll put Kirk Cousins above Jared Goff. Would I do that? Yes, I'll do that. For this video, I'm going to say he's better than Jared Goff. But that's not saying much. Jared Goff better be better than Nick Mullins. They say that their defense is better than us. I ain't going for all that. And it doesn't even matter what the stats say because y'all have to prove it to us and prove it to us in the playoffs when we play y'all. If we play y'all. So we got to stop that dang on run game. And uh, they got a wide receiver, St. Brown. I ain't worrying about him though, man. We got to stop him. He's having a career year. He has the most receiving yards in his career this year with um, 1,175 receiving yards. And he has seven touchdowns, which is the best of his career. They have a, a good wide receiver, Sam Laporta which he's having a great year. He is a touchdown machine. So Brian Flores, you have to look out for him. He has nine touchdowns on the year. Very impressive. And he has 758 receiving yards. But other than that, you stop the run game and you stop Brown. I ain't worrying about them, bro. I'm really not worrying about their offense, bro. We, like I said, they have to prove it to us. Daniel Hunter is doing his thing right now, and I'm expecting him to go crazy. DJ Wanham, his Robin, because you know Daniel Hunter is Batman. DJ Wanham has eight sacks on the year, and I'm hoping he can mess around and get 10-plus sacks on for the whole season. We got three games to go. So I'm hoping he gets two sacks this game. You know what I'm saying? I think DJ Wadham can do it. Jordan Hicks, there's a high possibility that he might be playing against the stinking Detroit Lions. And Jordan Hicks, before he got hurt, was leading this team in tackles. Before he got hurt, he was playing at a very high level. Ivan Pace Jr., we need you, brother. We need to stop the run. Let's get back to the defensive tackles on the Minnesota Vikings defensive line. Jonathan Bullard, Sheldon Day, Harrison Phillips, Tonga, Roy. We need y'all to stop the run. It starts with y'all. This is going to make us get this dub. We have to take their biggest strength and let their biggest weakness, which I feel like their biggest weakness is Jared Goff throwing that ball because he will throw you a couple of interceptions. That's just how I feel, y'all. That's just how I feel. Let me know in the comments below how you feel about this game. And do you think the Minnesota Vikings can tame the Lions on Christmas Eve? The final score prediction. Give me a final score prediction in the comments below. I'm going to say 36 hmm, to 24. That's how I feel. I'm out. This is the end of the video. I truly appreciate you vibing with the bull. Make sure you hit that subscribe and like button. I'm out. My sports vibes, thank you for vibing with me. Yeah. My sports vibes, thank you for vibing with me. Uh -huh. I'ma talk that talk about, about the, the Sixers and the Vikings. I'ma I'm talk that talk about, about the, the Sixers and the Vikings. Let's go. I really do this. I'm a hybrid fan. Uh -huh. I'm a stand up man. Yeah. They be hating on the squads, but, but they, they really, really a fan. I'ma talk that talk about the Sixers and the Vikings. I'ma talk that talk about the Sixers and the Vikings. Let's go.